Kaki. And I'm Kay, and remember, we only judge a book by its cover. And we find ourselves once more amid the towering stacks of your library what where is I... a towering stack, even? What? Okay, so the stacks. Stacks yes. of books. I have shelves! Yeah, no, they're still called the book, the stacks. The stack, like, okay, so a stack is not, a, it's not necessarily a pile. Oh, I thought there was a pile of books that I keep in the... Oh, never mind. Well, okay, no, I know about some of the piles that you keep around, and there's also the piles that I, that I sort of formed in order to construct uh-huh. various structures. But no, it's called, it's called the book stacks. Uh, uh, those are the you know you know the yeah. cupboards and the and, and the shelves like the nightmare stacks. Ah, yeah. uh, what? Never mind. We'll come to that later. Okay, great. Well, so this is a good introduction. So this is where where baffling books are reviewed, but not read by yours truly. And I I, I really can't wait to uh, review this week's book with you. But before we do that, maybe we should catch everybody up on the unnecessary lore that has spun around this literary review podcast, where I've spent the last ooh six months. Yeah, call it that. You call it six months. Uh, as as a, as a guest in your library, and I've been yes, subsisting. That's, that's a very nice way to put it. Thank on you. The, yes, honestly, I've been I've been enjoying it. It's it, it's given me some challenges, and mm-hmm. it's given me a lot of opportunities. Good that, workout too. Uh, have you seen these guns? Wait, how, how did you make those? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, and well, the situation with the uh, Viliver Raptors, whom mm-hmm. I whom I once befriended, and who have sort of turned on me now that I'm I'm, I'm a junior uh, librarian. librarian. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, the, Things are things are continuing to worsen. So after okay. I've moved the yeah the uh, uh, the section of of books based on films based on books up to the up yeah. to the upper upper shelves, I mean they're pretty clever. They and they really want to kill those books. The nights are are very long while I try and guard them, and they try various strategies. And we could move them into the grimoire cage. They can't get in there. I don't want to be in the grimoire cage. Oh, so if you'd rather prefer sitting up all night and uh, guarding yourself, yes, and the books, against, absolutely, like, little the library rafters. Oh, they're they're crafty though. Mm. Like they've they. I mean, they come at you from the side. And from above. Clever girl. Oh, not so far. Oh, good luck. Ah, Lucky that is for you. no. That is a very good point. I'm going to check out the. Uh, you've got what a, a system some ceiling up here you've got probably uh, air mm-hmm. vents or or whatever all right i'm gonna have to trap those yeah. <laughs> they're not gonna get me you might take the uh, the drapes and like use them to like form like a, kind of like a shape like a clambo yeah exactly yeah. Except for, for library raptors oh yeah it'll be a it'll be a sort of funnel trap yeah so it may be clear that i've 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 taken sides Mm-hmm. Um, because there, apparently there are sides in the library, and there is the the the, the wildlife, and there are the books. And I'm on, as a junior librarian, I'm on the side of the oh, books. Oh, very good. Uh, I've got my uh, I've got my tweed, uh, well, imaginary tweed uniform. It's really tweedish, bookworm leather sort of stick yeah. together. The last skirmish with the, uh, as you mentioned, nippy little velociraptors did did tear them up a bit at the at the sleeves and angle. So it's more like it's more like a fancy boy's romper at this point well. with. Uh, but again, check out these guns. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's like looking good. It's Thank like all you. That, all that heavy book lifting must be paying off. Come to that. I mean, I, I can get you to like help in move a new section next week. That would be lovely. Oh, yes. I'd be honored. I'd be That'd delighted. Be, uh, there's there's going to be a truckload arriving and we'll have to... Uh, Will the uh, truck have a driver? Uh, Will I get to meet another human being? No, no, no. They, they, oh, okay. they're back up to the loading dock, and that's uh, that's all. Ah, that's need. probably yeah, yeah. It's probably safer. So none yes. of the. We're gonna have to clear off a little section. We need to expand visitor center a little bit because we'll be having an open day in the library soon. Oh, oh, that's very exciting. Well, um, hmm, hmm. the visitor center is the central habitat of the Vliberaptors, so I oh, think yeah, I'm going to over. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to have to go on the uh, offensive. I we, think we, 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 maybe we can like start in the cafeteria and then kind of like drive them back slowly. Yeah, like a beachhead. Uh, yeah, see if we, see if we can maybe shuffle them into the uh, secretary's office. What's with all the biohazard um, stickers on the secretary's office? It's the secretary. Wow. Okay, I thought so we were done with plumbing good, the depths of this library. It's a good but, point that you mention that, because like putting the library raptors in there might not be advisable, because what if they figure out how to work the photocopier? <laughs> yes, who knows? Uh, we, we might wind up with lots and lots of uh, Xerox Velibraptor bums. I was, gonna more, I was more afraid of Velibraptor fanzines. <laughs> Can you imagine how great those would be? I don't think great is the word that I would use. Yeah, but it's... They're, well, they're clever little little yes. subs. Like, they like their they like to dress up in their costumes. I can only imagine that when they, you know, when they get the pens and the paste and the, and the, and the, and the stencil um, paper, they yes. must be capable of doing some great things. It kind of horrifies me, the thought, but I'm not entirely, I don't think I want to plumb the depths of their minds. Well, you haven't spent the last weeks um, in, in, in their company learning uh, their ins and outs, both as their friend and now, I won't say enemy, but 
adversary, I think that's fair. Nemesis. We're well, opponents. Quite there yet. I think we need boundaries, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, I understand that at first I was a I was a guest in their habitat, but their habitat was actually your library, and your library mm-hmm. now has a junior librarian, and that means that these boundaries. You know, they organically shift as we all as we all that's, grow that's, and evolve in our, our oh, roles. Yes, that's a very mature way of looking at it. Speaking of maturity, yes. what do we have in store for our readers this week? Ah, yes. Uh, this book is one of Spider Robinson's later works, Telempath. Yes, and it's a it's a portmanteau. It's one of my favorite types of word in the in the in the world. Why why is that? Why why do what, what do you enjoy about what do you like about portmanteau so much? Oh, I like the economy. A portmanteau is a combination of of two words that are that are joined up usually by like skipping a few syllables, but you you do still kind of get what they're what it about. So in this mm-hmm. case, it's like telepath, empath. Those prefixes are kind of combined to indicate that not only is it is it remote sensing, but it's a remote emotional sensing. Yes, that's what I got out of the book as well. So yes, for those of us that uh, don't know who uh, Spider Robinson is, he is a... Uh, including uh, myself. Science, uh, he's, he's a giant spider. Science fiction writer of some fame. Oh. Mostly known for the uh, Callahan's Cross Time Saloon series, and reputedly the person who coined the saying that on the internet nobody knows you're a dog. That was him? Yes. But yeah. I'm a dog. Well, yes, but... She beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's actually from Callahan's Cross Time Saloon, where one of the characters who frequents the bar is called Ralph Von Wow Wow, who is a science fiction writer himself. Ah. And uh, he really <laughs> loves the internet age because it just made life for him so much simpler for him because you could oh, just like, yeah. he could just like simply be his canine self on the internet and like. Yeah. You know, like... So, um,. I mean, before we get into the cover... We always get into the cover. That's what books are all about. And uh, for the readers at home, uh, if you look down at your podcasting device, you should, should be seeing the cover of today's book. And if not, you can look in the show notes for an image and a link. And boy, howdy, there is some... There's a few things going on there. There's some shit going on. Yes, it's the opening scene of the book. Well... Part yeah, of it's yeah, the yeah. Scene yeah. Of the book. Once the it's, once the once the action takes place in the in the present, uh, yeah, it starts it's off with a, some some little vignettes of right. the past. But uh, then it's like, well, we've got him sitting there on this on the uh, bench. This is why you can tell that it's it's a little bit allegorical, not allegorical, but it's a bit more of a mishmash of what's going on because he's clearly not bitten into the sandwich yet, whereas all the things happening around him start to happen after he's yes. eaten his sandwich. Yes. So, so we have a, we have a, an, an elderly looking gentleman with some 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 wild grey hair and a, and, a, and a nice clean moustache, and he's sitting on a on a park bench in a. Uh, in, a, in a city with skyscrapers behind him, yes, and he's sitting there with his uh, uh, with his lunch, and beside him is a skeleton yes. and uh, uh, some crows and a jaguar and some other skeletons. Is it a jaguar behind or him. a leopard? Uh, well, let us zoom in. Rosette, so that's a jaguar. Mm, leopards oh, have no jaguars, sp- but they have the, the, they're leopards filled. have jaguars. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they have the dark orange in the middle of the rosette, so that was what makes it a jaguar. In leopards, the, the inner part of the rosette is, is the same color as the uh, fur around them, and in jaguars, the, uh, the oh. rosettes are filled in with a little bit of darker orange. Oh, I see. That's, right. Well, and okay. of course, you can tell by the by, by the shape of the head, but that that would probably yeah, be but... lost in the skill of the artist who drew the, uh, uh, who drew the yeah, cover. Yeah. Well, is it? I mean, I I, I would count, I would, I would oh, count this this artist fairly fairly competent. It's, it's a well done leopard. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes or jaguar. We ha- even have a Twitter account. There is it. I say we have it, but there we is do. A, it's cover my ass cast there, on Twitter. Do. There is a Twitter account called Hourly Cheetahs. Yes, you'd think they know they're cheetah from a leopard, but even there, occasionally the odd leopard sneaks, <laughs> sneaks its way through the culling process of the uh, photos. Well, it, it, at least in, in in Dutch, cheetahs are called jachtleipart. They're called hunting leopards, and I believe that there's other languages in which uh, 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 there are similar modifications of the the basic leopard. Mm. You know what? Why they're called hunting leopards? No, because, because they already already the Egyptians domesticated them in order to take them hunting, to go hunting with See, the leopard, to go hunting with the leopard. Yes, they were used leopards used for hunting, not the tree leopards, but the hunting leopards. Oh, that is indeed what I what I thought. Yes, yeah, that you, the the ones that you could domesticate and take yeah. hunting because they are. Uh, reportedly very domesticable yeah, cheetahs. They're quite timid, yeah. They can have agreeable relationship with uh, uh, with humans. Yeah. A part, part of that's because of the way that they're, uh, the, they're naturally raised. Uh, leopard cubs are born, mum feeds them, and uh, then mum goes off to do their thing. And they're very inquisitive and self-learning. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they'll just, like, they'll prance around, prance around and do their thing. Whereas cheetahs uh, are taught by their, by, by their mother. 
They, the right. She just learned from observing what mum does and copying that, whereas leopards kind of find things out on their own. Oh, I see. You can socialize they're, they're more, them. They're more used to, to uh, yeah, reinforce behavior. And, and teach them new behavior. And I, leopards I just, are just like, um, what do you call them? Independent. Uh, yes, it's not the it's more charitable word than I was going to go for, but yes. Savages. Uh, uh, bloody minded ornery uh, orn ornery that's a good one yes yeah. that's a really <laughs> so good one. you have the hunting leopard and the ornery leopard yeah. i understand that in, in in zoos when a cheetah cub is born it's usually introduced to uh, a, a puppy a dog uh, often of a species that's uh, fairly swift like the the greyhound one that can can keep up basically emotional support dogs like i said they're, they're quite nervous on their own and if they just like have a familiar friend whom they spend all their time with yeah. and who is just clearly not bothered, then they are like, okay, apparently this is not something to be worried about. Yeah, because the uh, dog's comfortable around humans exactly, and the cheetah's uh, comfortable around the dog. Oh, exactly. So then the cheetah looks at the dog and they're like, oh, apparently this is playtime or we're, we're happy about this, so I don't have to be nervous about it. Oh, that's I excellent. They, I think they only do that for single ones, though. I've never seen that happen with a... Uh, with oh, a, when you have a, a, like a little, a little dillery kittens. Oh, yes, as you say, a coalition. Yes. Well, it's the, it's the brothers who stick together. And sometimes, like one or more uh, unaffiliated cheetahs of the same age, who bo both go out one out of wandering after mum disappears, uh, decide to like oh, you, you look all right. It's like friends, yeah, okay, friends, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then they kind of stick around each other. <laughs> that's that's so cute. And yes, even to the point if one of them goes missing, then they'll they'll be really they'll be very distressed about it. And yeah. It's like seeing looking for their missing brother. Some, well, some, so much of at least mammalian uh, um, uh, perceived animal social structures are essentially love. Like there, there was a lot of uh, uh, attention paid to uh, bunk science about wolves in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the early twentieth yeah. century about the the, the, the alpha, alpha and, and the omega and the, and the whole bullshit. Yeah, yeah, all of which was based on observing captive populations of just a bunch of wolves stuck together rather than uh, naturally formed packs, which are families. Yeah, mum, dad, and a couple of cubs, and maybe a few from last year still living in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> Or adoptees, like a, a, a juveniles go out ranging, and uh, so they can they can be adopted. No, oh, I didn't know that. Wolves are great creatures. Oh, oh yes, I have wolf puppy oh. kisses. Yeah, I wonder if I, <laughs> I've undoubtedly bragged about it. But yes, they are they are just absolutely absolutely adorable. They are such cute little 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 dudes. Up until uh, apparently the terrible twos, then they turn two and their personality changes. And they go all puberal on you. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, and then they become like proper wolves. But up until then, yeah. oh yes, yeah, so playful, yeah. so adorable. Yeah, all, all canine pups are like like oh. And then there was that bit in the news earlier this week about dogs having developed facial muscles that wolves don't have in order to, uh, be, able yeah. to be able to do their eyebrow thing and like be to more, do the puppy eyes, be more empathically communi communicative to humans. Ah, it's empathic, telepathic, telepathic yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we and, got it. and the podcast segue award of 2018, <laughs> another contender. <laughs> so yes, speaking of telepath, uh, let's take a look at the uh, at the synopsis here. The day after his daughter's wedding. Having waved her off to her honeymoon cruise, retired artist Arthur Robinson sits alone in the park and finally eats the last lunch his late husband made for him, utterly soaked in LSD. Here he is, about to bite into this sandwich. Utterly soaked. So I'm already thinking that whoever wrote that synopsis doesn't know much about <laughs> no. like LSD dosages. Like a couple hundred mil micrograms of LSD would be considered soaked. There's there's a little bit of um, popular myth uh, in the book, but you can also tell that the the author has definitely uh, experimented with it himself, yeah, or at least listened yeah. to some very some some actual first-hand accounts rather than like you know pink elephant i've never actually run into someone who sees who saw a pink elephant on lsd because no, it's not that kind no. of visual there is a scene in the terrible film euro trip where some some teens go on a on an ill-fated journey through various stereotypical uh, caricatures oh, of, yes. uh, of various european cities mm -hmm. and one of them they go to they go to amsterdam and after they come out of club van der sex uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <nice reference. laughs> yeah Okay, that's funny, actually. <laughs> and then they wind up like they want to try. They want to try space cake, so they go to a coffee shop and they get served by a by a by a Rastafarian gentleman, and they and they take their cake and eats the whole thing. And he starts sweating, and he starts seeing the 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 walls melt, and he starts seeing pink elephants coming at his like pulling at his shirt and climbing onto the table. The baker says, "What are you doing?" And he says, "No, I'm freaking out, man. I'm tripping balls." And he says, "No, you're not. This is a bakery." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very good, and that's I guess why it's always good to have a quiet and confident trip sitter because you get out what you put in yeah. as our hero arthur robinson has yeah. uh, has always heard about uh i mean substances that 
he himself has yes. never really... Well, maybe I've missed it, but the last sandwich his late husband made for him. So that, either that's going to be a very stale sandwich, or he's had a hell of a week where he lost his husband and had to marry off his daughter. Oh, that is a good point. I, I understand that uh, it was quite sudden. It was, uh, uh, it was unexpected. Yes. Um, and so, like, I, I sort of imagined that this was just something that, uh, uh, that his husband... His husband, Billery? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, was making for him and then and then regrettably passed away and that was like the last thing that he prepared that in the kitchen billery yes, yes. no i was just preparing myself oh. to say it that billery prepared for his husband arthur in the in in the kitchen like i'll eat that i'll eat that later and, but you know it's like it's, and then it's, later it's, turned to later yes but, but, so, you know sandwiches like I, I, bread doesn't keep very long and yeah. lsd is not much of a preservative in fact it denatures over time yeah but in the in the in the, in the freezer and then it's just in mm. the in the yeah just deep freezer yeah but I mean, that's mostly, fine for lsd yeah. right it's it, it, it denaturates in the presence of heat and uh, life. water. Heat and, heat and light. Water, uh, light. Water, not necessarily. No, it's soluble. Um, especially in the US, is a big problem. If it's chlorinated water, that'll break it down. But oh. that's the, it's, the chlor it's not the water itself. It's the chlorine in the water that does right. it. Right. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah, it just dissolves in regular water. But, like, especially light and heat are the ones that it's very sensitive to. Hey, good practical advice for our readers at home, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to preemptively... Pot, pot butter loses potency if you freeze it. <laughs> so let's all make sure that we use it nice and fresh. Just like Billery made this this fantastic sandwich. It was supposed to be a... a, a a celebration like their uh, their daughter I don't believe it was ever specified whether she was from a prior relationship mm -hmm. or through surrogacy or, or that would adopted. have been uh, their daughter Rosabeth <sighs> Yes, when I when I read when I read Billery's name, I was worried that that was going to be an unfortunate trend of ridiculous name. But Rosabeth is actually quite a quite a nice name, I thought, mm. and it, uh, itself a bit of a oh, it's a portmanteau. Why is that just now occurring to me that this book was utterly was utterly full of portmanteaus? Yes, yes, Billery and Rosabeth and uh, poor. Poor Arthur. <laughs> Poor Arthur. Yes, who's one of the few people's names who's not a portmanteau? No, no. It's uh, it's just Arthur, and they and they, and they lived as a very happy family in Jersey. Yes, and I've well, underlined it here so that we all know that it happened in Jersey. In Jersey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, there's, there doesn't appear to be anything to that, does there? No, there doesn't appear. No, my it's spine, just a... <laughs> my LSD senses are tingling. <laughs> no, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a place where where some people can yeah. live, and and of course uh, they live there together with their Labradoodle. Their their Labradoodle Percy. Oh yes. Yeah. Percy. The Labradoodle is such a. Like it's an absurd animal, but uh, honestly, all animals are. But it's a, it's a really such... handsome dog. Oh yes, and they're very healthy, mm -hmm. and they're very and they're very. Well, yes. Poodles are not renowned for being like overbred dogs, but Labrador surely are. So a little bit of mixed breeding is usually very good. for Hybrid dogs. vigor, they call it. Yeah, yeah. When uh, when species uh, hybridize, uh, even when they turn out to be sterile, which happens. Yeah. Uh, well, not so much with dogs. Oh no I mean, no no! Okay, within within okay, your own species, okay, it's usually fine. Uh, I suppose I don't, I don't know. Fox, are foxes and, and other canines. Can they breed crossbreed? If their habitats intersect. One of those little uh, hyper yappy little uh, phoenixes. Oh, oh God, the ear foxes. This beautiful video of like this little phoenix sitting there getting his like head and ears rubbed and it was just like enormous ears. Yeah, and it was just going like... Mm. Just yeah. blissing out. Yes, it was just oh. like, oh, yeah, so much ear to rub. It's like, yeah. yes. <laughs> it's like a Ferengi enjoying all uh, Max. That's good, yeah. <laughs> uh. A little perfect. <laughs> Phoenix would make good pets for Ferengi. I'm not sure which. I think it's a Star Trek one. And uh, when, they're, when they're coming in to negotiate and uh, Picard tries to make a proposition to him and the Ferengi who's, still, who's talking to on the, uh, uh, on view, the screen. view screen. And he goes like, well, make your plea. As you humans say, I'm all ears. <laughs> are so good uh, initially in, in, intended to be the the, the big bad in, yeah, the, in the, the 1980s the, like the Klingon, the Klingon, Klingon the replacement yeah they had the whole whips and like nasty temper and super and, sexism yes. and, and hyper capitalism and they, they kept the super sexism and hyper capitalism but it became more of a running gag, gag really yeah. yes. and, and our destined never to escape from it no because of cultural uh, yeah oh well. escape speaking of escape and I'm trying to ease my way back into a contender for the uh, uh, podcast Segway Award of, of, yes. of 2018. Like, that's 
a that's a bit of a that's a bit of a theme for like Arthur Robinson has been described as a as a as, as a dutiful husband and father mm -hmm. and uh, a hardworking uh, artist, specifically a cover artist who mm. was uh, in his day, and I thought this was really cool to to see it mentioned. Um, a peer of Lancelot Wuthrington II, oh. a, a cover artist that uh, that we know very well, yes. uh, who's done quite a lot of, if not all, of the book covers that we've ever reviewed. You'd almost start to think he would, but I he don't keeps think cropping like up, doesn't he? Master of styles, then, really? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. He's an absolute polymath. Also, very long-lived, very celebrated suspicious. career. <laughs> yes, <laughs> spanning decades, if not centuries. Yeah, things start to like become entertaining in the way they do when you take some LSD, and it kind of creeps up on you. Everything looks normal, but you kind of. I feel... mean, the first time, like the tab goes under your tongue, you're like, "Oh, this is it. This is it. Now it's happening." And then nothing. And then. I'm still me. Yeah. <laughs> I still have ten fingers. I know. Now is the right time to go out the door and do some shopping. And <laughs> everything appears to be fine. I've probably got everything under control for the next, yeah. ooh, 30 to 45 minutes. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, it doesn't kick in that quick. So he's just he's just enjoying an afternoon. And I could really, I can honestly really relate to him in this uh, in this moment. Because, yeah, he's 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 sad on the one hand uh, uh, oh, yes. with, with the passing of his husband. He's also incredibly joyous because he's just seen his uh, uh, his beloved daughter off to uh, uh, her wedding and her and her honeymoon after her wedding to her yeah yeah and he's got this he's got this sense of completion around him like that's all done and now i can just now i can just sit down and eat a sandwich soaked in lsd yes and talk to the crows uh yes the crows uh who were sort of odinian in their appearance oh, yeah. uh, after uh, the uh, the crows of uh, norse mythology so that was hugin and kissin mm. yeah maybe yeah. some 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 lingering desire for affection there yes. manifesting through uh, hugin and kissin oh yeah. yeah they're kind of sitting there like observing what he's doing if he's enjoying the sunshine and if that was really wise to eat both halves of that sandwiches at the same time in one go because and... yeah you can always have more but you can never have less no. They no, seem to it. say yes, and they do the whole thing of like left shoulder, right shoulder thing. Yes, and I like, like that. <laughs> they have yeah. this conversation quite regularly, which I expound in New York in Central Park, or was it Central Park? I don't know. No, it was, no, no. It was, it was Jersey, just a, it Jersey was just, Shores no, Park or something. That, yes, oh, yeah, yes, it. exactly. It's in it's in Jersey Shore. Jersey That's Shore. Where it ah, is. and yep. uh, I didn't know if there was a park. Well, I suppose they have a park. Well, there. no, this is this is New Jersey. New Jersey, as opposed to Old Jersey. Where's Old? Well, no, oh, it's just Old Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. But that's in the UK, isn't it? It's okay. a, it's it's one of the Channel Islands. You have you have Jersey oh, and Jersey. Jersey. Yes, of course, oh, it is in the UK then. And on on Jersey, by the way, they speak Gerier. Gerier, which sounds very almost French, but historic, quite Norman. Least. Oh, but, uh, I that thought is... they spoke also some some form of uh, Gallic land down there because I, I remember uh, oh. our uh, mutual French fair. I'm sure he's originally from that area, but oh, yeah, but yeah, when they had Irish fishermen or other people blown yeah. over for a storm, they could just like both of them just spoke their own local dialects, and they could look like the East Dutch dialect. Dialect and the German dialect and they're, the West—they're yeah, almost yeah. identical, as long as long as you don't go into uh, uh, into Hochdeutsch. Um, so but, yes, back to New Jersey Shore. That's right. Into the park, yes, where the first animals have started appearing around him yes. uh, in the form of the crows of the uh, uh, Hugin and Kissin, Kissin and then yeah. um, a Jersey cow oh, appears, like yeah. just a just oh, a, a very friendly one that yes. just moses up, just like, moves hello, thinking. Yeah, and he goes like, "Hey, what you thinking about?" He's like, "Grass." Mostly grass. <laughs> and, and, and anything else? Yeah, grass. And, and then what? Like, and grass. And have somebody ever given you a sandwich? And they're like, yeah. What do you think about nuclear physics? Whoa, whoa hold on, hold on. Um, there's something I'm missing. There's something I'm missing. Never mind. All <laughs> Cows don't die from LSD, do they? Uh, what? There's some animal that's ridiculously sensitive to LSD. Who found that out and why? I, it might have been cows. I uh, mean, it's one thing to test it on... <laughs> If I recall correctly... Soldiers. Yes, that's right. There is that research uh, uh, film from a, an occasion where British soldiers from, from Her Majesty's military were yep. uh, voluntarily took significant doses of, uh, uh, of LSD. And yep. it was so dryly reported that the, uh, that the, the, the field commanders were no longer able to read the maps and had, had to send it into yes. weeping. The prisoner had to help the, his captors uh, take him back to the uh, base camp, even though it was in plain sight across the field. <laughs> yes. Um, and the accuracy of the bazooka team was significantly has, impaired yeah. oh my god yes and after a while the commander had to like uh um 
And yeah, had to like admit that he was no longer in control of his troops, and he had to, <laughs> and they had to blow up the exercise. A lot of people, like a few people, freaked out. Okay, so no, there was in 1962, two scientists killed a elephant with LSD, but it was because he injected a massive overdose into it. So it's not okay. Like there, there again. Like, what is science. it with with scientific innovators killing elephants with with their invention, or with other people's inventions, oh, as, like as a, the case of yeah, 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 the, uh, the, Thomas Edison killing an elephant with uh, alternating current? Oh, look how dangerous it is. Every one of these uh, hallucinations nations that uh, that appeared to him while Arthur was sitting on that uh, uh, on that on that park bench was sort of allegorical for like hugging and kissing were were, were very much about his his longing for affection you know his uh, yeah, his family his, which is now gone well, like, yeah his daughter on the honeymoon and the and, and the cow sort of I guess for the the silence of an, an empty house like that kind of placidity that he uh, that he saw in himself. Uh, now that his his purpose is served, he might as well just be sort of standing around in a field, treading water. It becomes more explicit later in the book, where he's like finds that he can tune into uh, the feelings of the city and the people around it. It's like yes, he's always been a bit of a uh, empathic, empathic person, a sensitive, sensitive. Yeah, but yes, I think uh, I think the, was the having the, the this having booted into overdrive here. He he finds he can like yeah reach from Dr- Jersey Shore all the way to the far end of uh, Long Island. Oh uh, yeah, that was like, wild. Suck it in the, the emotions and the feelings of everybody in, t- in the city. Realizing the, the, the title of the book, where his, his, yeah, his, his sensitivity is amplified, as you say, and suddenly he's, he's sampling almost from, from right. all of these emotional experiences that other people are having. And they can be early on in their lives where they're feeling passion and excitement or, or later even than, uh, than he is, where they're feeling loss and whereas, uselessness. And, 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 and whereas he can't do that with anybody in the park. At least oh no! So I guess maybe that's like the the talent path is yeah. still, it's still like it's like he can only do it at a distance. It's very allegorical for his relationship with his late husband, who was oh, always yeah. kind of complaining that he was like, yeah, uh, no, there was there was there was, was like, inadequacity. You know, oh yeah, you don't in feel that relationship. You, don't, you don't have any feeling for it, and this and that, and it's like it turns out that he could, but only for like people further away and not for people close by. That's pretty deep, honestly. Yes. Like it, and a little it, bit sad as well, both for Arthur and for Billery. And I'm having a really hard time combining my sympathy for these characters with the fucking name that the writer gave them. And then, of course, uh, Olivia the skeleton shows up. Yes. <laughs> and uh, to uh... Olivia the skeleton, I think I think we see either Hugen or Kissin sitting sitting on top of Olivia. Yes, it's, it's kind of unclear. Yeah, but 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 that turns into a bit of a non-versation. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, Bolivia is just sort of sitting there and does not speak. At that point, he is actually just making it up. He's not even hallucinating. It is he's just like having both sides of the conversation with Bolivia. Oh yes, absolutely. But he has he has like plenty of plenty of animals uh, uh, around him, and of course, this leads to the appearance of his guide through his uh, his trip, Sancho Dante. Uh, <laughs> Comes out of the melting clock face. <laughs> yeah. Astride his, astride his little mule, wearing his, uh, wearing his toga, uh, and 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 leads him into the underworld, which is like realistically, it's just up the road, just twenty steps away from the uh, uh, the park bench. But yeah, the I underworld mean, of the, the underg- of the underground, is the undulation the of the grass. A lot of us can probably relate to this, where you're having a very good time inside your own head. Maybe you've uh, uh, you've enjoyed a little libation. Maybe you've enjoyed a, a, a refreshment of the of the lungs or the nose or whatever. Where you're responsibly consumed. Uh, a pleasure is and then you're walking down the street and it's a lovely day out and another human being is also walking down the street and you know oh that's one of those regular people whose brain's okay i hope he doesn't know how fucked up i am <laughs> oh look at me i'm getting away with it and you're grinning with so much pride because you remember to to lift your knee and your elbow as you're walking like yeah, a then, fucking thunderbird and they look like what is going on with that person it's like yeah, yeah. and uh, you just look at them uh-huh, i'm doing it i'm getting away with it totally straight nobody's noticing anything oh straights are so easy to fool <laughs> wibble wobble wibble wobble down the street marching along with a plushie tucked under your arm <laughs> yes oh, well, so I'm... after that that 20 pace journey into into the underworld which is just the other side of the park like there's a little t- little little underpass underneath the uh yeah there's a, a bit a, of alice in road. wonderland isn't there well, almost it's uh well, I thought so. I mean, the the the, the imagery well, of, the, uh, of, the, mean, of, like... the, of the tunnel. Yes, well, definitely that. Uh, but now, also, I mean, he's he's always been such a such a punctual gentleman. I sort of saw him as maybe a little bit of a white rabbit, yeah. someone that uh, that we get to follow. Except, of course, he has a he has a guide, which kind of reverses the role of the white rabbit in uh, in Alice in Wonderland. Yes. 
in, in this case, Sancho Dante. D- Sancho Dante, yeah. It's not really an inferno yet at this point. But it is Jersey, so you know what? In fact, it's it, it now that he passes through the through the tunnel in, in, in the park in Jersey, he winds up in the reversey. Oh. Where everything is kind of kind of wibbly wobbly. Upside, upside down Jersey. And upside downy, yeah. Uptown girls. <laughs> I'm holding up <laughs> I'm holding up notes that say nurse and girl just to show. No, because uh, Jersey Girl, that was his favourite film. But then his his daughter became oh. a nursey. Uh, who married a man called Jertsey, uh, uh, which caused a bit of controversy. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For the readers of home, I am looking very pleased with myself right now. <laughs> I can attest to that. <laughs> um, where are we going to go with this? <laughs> the book is unclear. It had, a, it had an unusual sort of literary structure of progressively opening up new avenues uh, 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 briefly alluding to uh, various experiences that uh, that Arthur uh, had had in the past or mm-hmm. was having now, and how they related to his relationships with. <sighs> okay, Rosabeth, so far so good. Mm. Billery, what? Uh, Willivia. No, that's the skeleton. That's the skeleton. That's right. Willivia yes. isn't even Ro- there. Rosabeth was the daughter. Rosabeth was the daughter <laughs> who married Jertsey. Yes. Uh, which I think is Jersey a, is a, the nursery. She was no, the nursery. Sorry, she, Rosabeth was a nursery, and, was a nursery, like and she and she twice. married a, yes. a, 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 a Jersey, Jersey who was a, who was a golfer who played in the Jersey Open. Oh dear! There's one more. There was one more There's there. One more. Okay. Right. And then there was the meteor shower. I mean, this has <laughs> this has interrupted stories that we've read before. I believe yes. the the very first book that we that we reviewed, uh, Aliens from Space, um, centered around a meteor shower. Uh, it it just seems to be this 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 symbol that reoccurs whenever whenever writers seem not to know yes. what they're what they're well, going to do next. I think that was more of a um, um, it was a bit bit of a lead in. It's like you no, know, the the whole bright sparkling. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Like yeah. The suddenly, the, the suddenly, the massively fascinating sight, and it's probably just the fireworks across the river. But you know, you never know. But oh, uh, yeah. it led a bit, in my opinion, to the to the big epiphanos that he had uh, towards the end of the book, <laughs> yes. which is like you know, it's like yeah. just like the meteor shower branched through his vision. He went, "It's all right to be sad, and but life goes on." And it's like one of those things that seem really deeply really profound, profound when you're like tripping balls. <laughs> yes, and exactly. later you come like, "Well, I kind of knew that already." Didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> or like that's... it didn't it didn't really matter. When you walk a mile in your shoes, you'll probably need to buy new shoes sooner or later, and it's all yep. spirals is the other thing it's all, it's all spirals it's all spirals that's another one of those it's like, epiphanots like, it's like, like it's all onions it's some bullshit about, about shoes and then it's all about spirals it's all spirals <laughs> to be honest I think like like coming back to the cover like the leopard that was just a dude in a fursuit who was uh, just, yes <laughs> yes that was absolutely unquestionably but some guy was like like his first suit, do you some first suit is doing like a little, yeah, doing like, some, some some charity work as uh, uh, as our furry friends do. Makes me wonder what Sancho Dante uh, or even Willivia were. Were there's also just real people just I just sitting well, there? It symbolizes more the, the the emptiness in his life. You know that it was just the yeah. bones left over. All the all the joys of the flesh were gone. Uh, in the, in, oh, like we'll Picked clean, gone. perhaps, by hugging and kissing. Oh. And the, oh, yeah. Well, that, there seems to be more to this book than we, th- we thought at first. Well, Funny certainly because the, uh, the inscription at the beginning, you know how some books start with a, with a, with a fancy quotation? Yeah. Uh, they're supposed to really ponder. Uh, uh, Dune did that every, uh, uh, every chapter was, oh, yeah. uh, was headed by some supposedly historical uh, uh, fiction that, Quote, of yeah. course, uh, Frank Herbert himself wrote. And this was, well, the, the, the curious phrase, Mia Schwebschipo estas angulo plena. Um, I don't know what Schwebschipo means. Schwebschipo. Schwebschip. Oh. Did you get it? Yes. Hovercraft. Yes, I figured that yeah. as much. Well, okay, because and this Anko is... And would be full of eels. Full of eels, yes. that is correct. Yes, very good. Oh, I didn't realize that you also spoke uh, Esperanto. I did not. Is... <laughs> well, I think I have a few, maybe a few of the like dictionaries have seeped into my brain. Uh... Well, ex- there you go. That was originally designed to be a, an easy to learn, easy to absorb second language for yes. uh, uh, speakers of European languages, of course. But this phrase, you can sort of guess what it is if you, if you kind of squint and mm-hmm. it's sort of like like Mia, my obviously estas is that one's fairly yes. clear. Angulo plena, like anguilla uh, uh, eel in French, and then I love yeah. that like ple- apparently 
So plena, I think, is full. So you can you can also say estas plena uh, de or di plena plenty. I suppose. Is like, I think yeah. that's the I think that's the indication. The the but it's it's eelful Eelf. in Esperanto. Yeah, no, can... My hovercraft is eelful, and I just okay. no, love that. Like that this. is that is my new favorite uh, way to, to 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 indicate that anything is in anything else. So, um, and of, of of course, I mean, we can all understand the the incredible depth and wisdom of this phrase that originally emerged from a sketch in Monty Python, uh, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it there is, we go. As far as I'm uh, aware, I think they can. In fact, the, the it's been copied many, many times yeah. all over the place. But uh, yes, and I the, think it was someone that inserted that as a joke. In, I think it was the Finnish phrase book or something. Oh, very good. Yes, uh, I mean it's and a the, 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 somewhere later in on the episode they like put out this police report that they're looking for the person who like uh, <laughs> vandalized the uh, vandal, van, vandalized yeah. the Finnish English dick uh, uh, Hungarian, 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 that's Hungarian, that's the one. Hungarian was yes, it was the other one of the Finno-Ugric isolates. Yes. They're easy to mix up. <laughs> they're Plus, impossible no. to mix up. Yeah, not if you speak either. It's like, yeah. But so I think the profundity of this phrase sort of speaks for itself, and we needn't like insult the intelligence of our of our readers at home by explaining to them the, the beautiful literary symmetry of this phrase "mia schwebschipo estas angulo plena" and how it relates to the the various aspects of the story that we've no, touched on no, so no, far. Let's not let, no. let's not like make it. We're uh, we're all experienced readers yes. here. So let's not insult their intelligence. And <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Given the the unexpectedly sublime uh, literary like rhythm to this this really well constructed book, where it's 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 quite obvious even in our description now that Spider Robinson had a very clear idea of exactly where he was going from the start and hit the exact necessary narrative beats uh, in order to arrive at the very well defined and satisfying conclusion. Yeah, no, well, he did a little bit of a Mozart, you know. It's a little bit too many notes, but uh, uh, then again, <laughs> yes, you, just you, take some out. You would say that, like, yeah, removing or changing even one of them would be taking away from the total. Yeah, it would, would diminish the whole. Mr. Salieri said, that's the word he used. Very good. Okay, so how many Salieri's out of Mozart? How are we going to rate Ooh, this book? No, What's, a... Actually, you're familiar with, uh, with, with Herr Mozart's oeuvre a bit more than, uh, than I am. Ooh, a little you bit. were able to name oh. some of them when, where, where I struggled. You were once able to name at least one, so even. I think he has at least 626 works. 626, that many. That's well, quite a lot. That's based on the fact that his Requiem is Kachelverzeichnis 626. Kachelverzeichnis? Kachelverzeichnis. It's Mr. Kachel, who was a, a, oh, German, was a German scholar who, yes. who sat down to classify all of Mozart's works. Right. Uh, so he basically assigned because a lot of them have like similar titles, like you know, piano overture for four strings or something like that. Ah, uh, and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, started assigning them a number, and I assume he did it more or less chronologically, chronologically in as much as he and, was able to. Like the Requiem was one of the last pieces he composed, so it's like it's going to be somewhere in that uh, order of magnitude. Okay. Because I thought Kachel was like fireplace or, or oh, uh, Kachel, central heating. Dutch, no, it's yeah. Kachel. It's a C-K-O umlaut. Uh, oh, Kachel. Ah, okay. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Uh, so I would give it a coronation, which would be Piano uh, uh, Concerto number 26 in D major. <laughs> Also known as Kachel for Zeichnis 537. Out of 626. Uh, I'm very satisfying. I would say that's a good grade. Yeah, I think, I think Spider Robin should, should, be, should be very happy that his book Telempath has been so, so well and truly reviewed by... Well, you know, you know what they say in Ratatouille. The reviewers have the easiest job. It's like it's, they only have to be critical and they can pick things apart easily. And it's like... Yeah, that's not true. The, we, we're not the creators. We, we just, no, we're exactly. just the reviewers. We, we, we really do have a, just an easy job. I mean, we just I'm read the book. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> that's that. Speaking of reviews, while we love being your dirty little secret, we also love it when you share that dirty little secret with a, uh, with a friend, especially if that friend is called, say, iTunes or Spotify or whatever you get your, your your podcast but even more than that we would just love to hear from you uh, uh, you can find us on Twitter at CoverMyAssCast, uh, CoverMyAssCast at gmail.com, CoverMyAssCast.com, like a whole plethora of, of locations. Anything with Cover My Ass. Uh, cover my ass cast. No, do not go to Cover My Ass on Twitter. No, oh. no, we do not. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. If that's your thing, by if all the, means no, go there, by, but just don't yeah. expect any literary reviews there. Yeah, the, the, you, won't, you won't find... Oh, good lord. So much for uh, 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 this week's book. Thank you for reviewing it with, uh, with me. That was an excellent selection. It was. It was lovely. And what do we have in store? for our readers next week. Next week's book is Mark Lay's famously acclaimed Pets with Tourette's. 
<laughs> I love it when it does. And that about covers it. Thank you for joining us at Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I'm Kay. Remember, we only really judge a book by its cover. Bark! Bark now! Bark now! Somebody's been barking for four hours. <laughs> <laughs>